All right, you guys, it's elevated here. Um, so I'm actually doing like a filler episode. I don't think I'm gonna be able to finish um, Denial of Death um, in time for a September video. So this one's gonna be kind of like a random interjection. Um, and it's kind of some. it's a topic I pretty much came up with like yesterday. So um, I don't have a, a PowerPoint presentation for it. It's kind of just going to be rambling. So I apologize if this one seems a little bit less structured <laughs> than my other videos. But yeah. <clears throat> um, so today's topic is going to be um, called Nostalgia is the Opium of the Masses. Because it really is. It pretty much has been like, <laughs> it sounds dramatic <laughs> to use the word like weaponized. But it really has been like weaponized um <clears throat> a lot lately um let's see so there's 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 two two points of nostalgia that i want to bring up with and the first one has to do with um rights and freedoms and the other one has to do with um media so um <clears throat> with the rights uh so you have the um the typical like oh, this is the new normal, we're having our rights eroded, um, we're, we, we aren't as free as we used to be, which is, like, it's, like, kind of true and not true at the same time. Me, personally, um, I believe if you aren't 100%, like, truly free, then you can't call yourself free. Like, there's no, like, sliding scale of freedom in my mind. So, like, it's either, like all or nothing type deal so when you hear people say stuff like oh we used to be more free back in the day it's like mm, you used to benefit more from the system but that doesn't necessarily mean you were more free um so that's kind of i think i had more to say about that but um i'll have to think about it um more um and then the other one is um Oh, yeah, I did have something to say about that. Um, so, like, people are talking about, like, oh, I miss I miss the good old days um, before um, all this all this stuff started happening in 2020. Uh, but we had more freedom back then. And it's like, did you, though? I mean, we really haven't, <laughs> like, um, <laughs> you really think you were more free in, like, 2016 with, like, the, well, I mean, since, like, 2001 honestly with the patriot act with everything going on this and that and that's all stuff you can like look into um <laughs> it, it this kind of have to do, has to do with the um like pendulum swing idea that i had in my last video on love where it's like um it's it's like a constant um disturbance or how would i say that um it's like introducing um, noise in a stable environment. Like it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna put everything off kilter. Um, it's kind of hard to explain. I, I, I'm like visualizing it more than I'm putting into words. <laughs> Um, but like, um, where it's like you, you're, you're constant and that's what nostalgia has to do with it too. It's like, you're constantly, um, you're either like, um, thirsting for a freedom that you thought you had because nostalgia is a drug and it, it, it colors your perception of how things used to be, or you're, um, thirsting for the freedom that like an ideal freedom that, um, you think you should have like it's it's constantly like this um back and forth like it's 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 like it's a disturbance it's it what's that word Ugh. i can't think of it right now i'm gonna try though give me like five seconds I really can't it's like okay it's like being being knocked out of equilibrium or like those old um 
those 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 balancing toys where you would have like it would you put it like the, i think that was like the bird one i'll probably put a picture of it where like it's it's at absolute stillness <laughs> um with a zero outside force it's perfectly balanced it's in equilibrium and any sort of like slight knock on that is going to disturb that equilibrium um so that's that's kind of um how where that goes with that um the other thing with nostalgia what was i going to talk about media um <laughs> and i think this is really funny because this is more like um <laughs> people talk about how like oh woke pc garbage is ruining movies nowadays back in my day movies were so much better and it's like mm, were they though or are you only remembering like the good movies like in in my mind from what i've seen like a good like seventy percent of movies are probably like I'm just pulling numbers out of my ass. I'll say like sixty percent of movies are probably like garbage. Maybe like thirty percent are like mediocre, and maybe like five to ten percent are like actually good on 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 some like objective level. <laughs> but it's like <laughs> the the wokeness doesn't. It never changes the quality of the movies. You're just <laughs> it changes your. I don't know how to say it, but it's like it's it's this it's this perception of oh this this nebulous thing called wokeness is infiltrating our movie industry and making it worse, and it's like no, it's just coloring it like it's not changing the quality of it um. <laughs> And I know a lot of people are probably going to disagree with me on that, but it's whatever. Um, how I want to relate that to where my next idea is going. This whole, like, woke PC um, stuff is like... Um, well, I do want to talk about white people, and um, I always talk about, like, Christian patriot truthers or whatnot, and I think it's, I, I'm it, 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 <laughs> entirely self-aware that I'm talking a lot of shit about, like, right-wingers and not left-wingers as much as I should be, to be, like, more quote-unquote balanced or whatever, but that's just because I feel like left-winger, um, left-wing stuff is easier to <clears throat> mm. there was a there was a quote um or a comment on youtube actually i think that was talking about um the the inversion of ideals where um Even though right wings are normally right wingers um, are normally associated with Christians and the whole like Christianity um, ideology is centered around um, loving thy neighbor. Like it's it's the left wing who shows more empathy and compassion for others, <laughs> um, whereas the left wing is centered around the ideology of like freedom and. <laughs> Um, even though the right wing is more, um, actually focused on, well, <laughs> actually <laughs> on the surface, um, it's, it's, it's on, uh, on paper, it's focused on freedom. <laughs> um, what is that? The inversion of ideals. I thought that was a funny idea. Um, but yeah, I do want to talk about them because, um, like white people, <laughs> <laughs> I I I just think it's really funny using that phrase. Um white people do have like legitimate concerns I would say about being well they'll they'll use different words for it. Um but I call it the the dethroning of um white people honestly um in society. <sighs> because it's like And I wish I could put this in a more like, in a way that didn't seem so harsh, but it's like, <laughs> I feel like white people are, are, um, 
almost have like a guilty conscience of being reduced to a minority because of how they've treated minorities in the past. Um, It's almost like um, they're scared to get their just desserts in a way. Um, Which is like... (laughs) Well, I want to go into the whole like white thing as well because I don't believe there is such a thing well (laughs) that's not how I want to say that this concept of being white is so nebulous and it only like (sighs) I'm mad I didn't do any research to double check um the historical accuracy of the things i'm about to say but like i'm pretty sure from what i remember um back during like segregation and like the early like 1900s like the meaning of white was more limited like um italians irish um nationalities like that weren't included in um the whole like um being white um narrative until it became convenient for them to be it's almost like they uh it's almost like well they (laughs) it's almost like um it's almost like uh irish like those people were like integrated into the white um identity um just to make up for their fallen numbers in a way like just to just to retain their um their their hold on the majority if that makes sense that's kind of a mm. <clears throat> ah, it is what it is um but i i just think it's really funny how people like are so quick to and this goes into like the whole pride thing too like i think well one thing like pride in itself is bad enough but to take pride in something that you had no control over or that you never did or to take pride in other people's accomplishments made makes absolutely zero sense to me so to take pride in something such as like being white is so so ridiculous honestly like i i'm not white but i also don't identify with my own quote unquote race or uh nationality or whatever like i just don't <laughs> like i'm an individual <laughs> like it's it's the same um seeing the forest where the trees type like you don't <clears throat> saying that i am i am white just sounds so like i you are nothing but you like (laughs) white isn't is just a concept it's an idea it doesn't really exist like in the in in actuality it's more of like a like just a group concept to attach yourself to and this is actually um um i'm like halfway through denial of death so he talks a little bit about this um uh, that your Kaza Sui project, Sui project, however you want to say that. Um, it's basically like this, this project of immortality. Um, people recognize that their mortal bodies are, are well, mortal. Um, so they attach themselves to like either like ideals or concepts such as like nationality or race or something like that. To be like, um, okay, well, if I can't live forever, then my race can. Or if I can't live forever, then my ideology can. Um, so they, they fight tooth and nail for that, um, to, to kind of, like, combat this, like, fear of death or annihilation or whatever. Um, so I just think it's really funny how it's, like, people, (laughs) they're so quick to to be, like, um, oh, well, (laughs) like, react to, like, all the, the whole, like, um, anti-white propaganda which again most of it is on social media uh, on the internet um social media and stuff like that um 
which is another point I want to bring up. I think I've mentioned it before about, like, governments, how it's, like, how much does your government, like, actually affect you? Like, um, honestly, on a day-to-day basis, I, I think, like, the biggest effect people have, the government has on people is probably, like, taxes and gas prices. And, like, <laughs> I just think it's so funny how it's, like, so predictable if you have a Democrat elected, gas prices go up. If you have a Republican elected, gas prices go down. And, like, that's, the, like, the main talking point people talk about. That's probably, like, the most tangible effect you see. Um, I mean, like, you have, like, taxes as well, obviously. They probably change as well. Um, but it's it's different because it's, like, you're, you're going to have your taxes taken out no matter what. <laughs> so it's, like, uh, it's whatever. Um someone called um taxes your um subscription um cost for being a part of society (laughs) which is really funny because that's basically what it is um but it's like it people worry about like the government like way too much honestly where they're like oh they're they're doing this and this and this and it's like how like how many times how 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 much does that actually affect you in your day-to-day life like how much has policy changed the way you work the way you eat the way you hang out with friends the way you spend your free time like how much does that it it really has an almost a negligible effect um on everything um Um, apart from, um, well, apart from, like, random instances, like, obviously dealing with police or stuff like that, um, which, I mean, like, (laughs) it is what it is, like, people talk about, like, oh, well, um, yeah, like, uh, people obviously want to go straight towards the BLM movement. It's like, um, cops do, like, statistically, they do, like, disproportionately. Like, there's there's just a whole can of worms with that that I don't really want to go into. But basically, like... it's 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 still it's still it's it's negligible in some sense because you really aren't or you shouldn't be dealing with police like on a day-to-day basis but it can have like a tangible effect on like your psyche if you deal with like a um like i've i've had a i've had a cop <laughs> pulled me over for a broken taillight walked up to me with his gun drawn for no reason like he didn't point it at me or anything but like absolutely no reason (laughs) for him to like display that level of hostility when they're supposed to be trained to uh defuse situation or de-escalate situations but that's 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 what it is i don't really like honestly if you have it if you i mean it's the whole like stanford prison experiment if you have if you have a profession um where people are supposed to like um it's such a loaded term nowadays but like oppress other people call it what you want I'm going to call it, a, it, it is like when you're putting someone in handcuffs, when you pull them over with your gun drawn, like it is oppression. I don't care if it's justified or not. Like it is what it is. Like, <laughs> you know, um, um, but it's like, oh, fuck, where was I going with that? Uh, this is <laughs> this is why I can't really do off the cuff <laughs> videos. Uh, this is funny. Um, yeah. Okay, that's where I was going with that. The the whole um, like it 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 really. It, it,
like I'm I'm thinking back to um the ferryman from um Siddhartha um where it's like he or um I want to say it's a Henry David Thoreau quote um, where he says, a man can grow rich in Turkey even if he is by all means a good and honest citizen of the Turkish government. It's like, how much, <laughs> like, people talk about, like, my freedoms, my freedoms. And it's like, what what are you using that freedom for? And like how much of it like if you're honestly trying to lead okay i if you're trying to lead the like spiritual life that i'm espousing and stuff like that no government on earth can really like oppress you or or keep you from living that life you know we talked about that in the conflict video like the most they can do is put the 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 hatred of the world upon you and it sounds like a bad thing, but in retrospect, it's really not that <laughs> not that much. I mean, like, considering this is just like they can only do that in this one life, eh, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, going back to the, the ferryman from Siddhartha, it's like he he's not sitting here arguing about like oh my freedoms are being taken away like <laughs> all he's doing is just living as spiritually as he can <laughs> um within the bounds of his society um i wouldn't say within the bounds i would say more like I don't know. Like, it's it's very... Like, this, this, this spiritual, like, type of life that I'm talking about. Like, it's, it's very, like, removed from society in, in a sense where, like, you can really live this kind of life in pretty much any age. Um, like... Well, <laughs> I talk about, like, spiritual life, but, like, then you bring up, like, Epicure Epicurus, the Stoic, who was a slave, pretty much, like, um, espoused pretty much these same ideals um, back then. Um, pretty much every age has, has this type of, like, uh, every society. Like, you... <sighs> I don't know how to explain it. Like, people are so caught up in, like, worldly passions and desires... And, like, that's really all that really affects, like, um, <clears throat> when they talk about, like, erasing our freedoms, it's, like, your freedom to, um, own a firearm, for example. Like, um, how, how is that going to help you spiritually? Um, it really doesn't matter. Like, the only things they can affect are, like, worldly, um, um, things that don't matter in the end um but yeah um kind of really got derailed um i'm not really gonna see how this thing is playing out till i finish it and listen listen to it over but um in a roundabout way i kind of wanted to go back to white people again um this concept of um people are gonna have different words for it but like dethroning the white uh people from their like majority control um it's like why are you attached to that to to the to the identity of being white like it's it really is inconsequential in the in the grand scheme of things like it's like um <clears throat> no one no one would be attacking you if you didn't identify as white you know what i mean 
and it's like, oh yeah and another thing I wanted to bring up like on the internet and stuff like that like how much of that has like ruined our perception of what reality really is like um uh we used to have this joke like way back when I was in like middle school back when like the internet was first coming around myspace and shit <laughs> um where it was like uh, they would do, like, PSAs about, like, cyberbullying and, like, how to avoid it, this and that, and <laughs> me and, uh, one of my friends would talk about, like, cyberbullying doesn't exist because you can literally just log off, like, turn off the phone or whatever, <laughs> which, um, oh yeah, that relates to the whole, like, government thing, too, like, government doesn't really affect you, like, in your day-to-day -day life, um, half the shit people freak out over on the internet really doesn't affect you in your day-to-day -day life like how many times do you um run into people in real life who um attack you um for this or that like it, it, and <laughs> it's it's almost like a law of attraction um type shit where it's like if if you're out looking for that kind of trouble or if you're like hyper vigilant hyper aware of this shit then you're gonna be seeing things that aren't really there you're gonna be like um you're gonna be um projecting that like hostility um first like you're gonna initiate that hostility almost in a way um and that other people are just gonna reflect back upon you um, whereas if you didn't identify as white, if you didn't identify as all these, like, pointless things, like, that, it wouldn't, um, like, it, you wouldn't have that, like, um, that initial, like, um, how am I trying to say this? It's like, okay, me, I'm a, I'm a very meek person, like, I give off that vibe, like, people, like, even people who, like, just pass up on the street, like, <laughs> I remember vividly this one time where, um, I was at a gas station, it was very busy, a lot of people going in and out, but, like, I could tell this one, um, he wasn't homeless, but he, um, he was begging for money, and, like, he, like, single, I was still getting out of my car, just pumping gas, and he was, like, up towards the storefront, and he, like, he, I could tell he was, like, scanning everybody, but then he, like, singled me out and almost, like, immediately knew I would be the type of person to, like, not say no if he asked for money. <laughs> and it's, like, it, it, it's, like, in, in that sense, like, if, if you're the type of person who identifies as white and feels like the entire world is attacking you or coming after you, like, people are gonna sense that and sense your, like, um like your your hostility in a in a sense like you they're going to sense that you're in defense mode and because you because you're so stuck on being proud of being white <laughs> um and it's like people really do sense that on like an ethereal level um so yeah Um, I'm just kind of going back because I don't think I made that point clear enough. Um, so in the same way that like the government doesn't really affect you on a day to day basis, but people freak out over it is the same way that like all of this like woke PC stuff like doesn't really affect you on a day to day basis. I mean, unless you're like really attached to movies or whatever, I don't see why you would be <laughs> like how do how do how do movies <laughs> help you spiritually? But well. <laughs> apart from like um finding truth drops in them which you can find truth drops in most movies woke not woke um mediocre movies bad movies great movies like they're all gonna have like some level of like truth to them and if you're really just gleaning them for the truth and then you're getting value out of that you can get value out of any movie and excuse me you can actually extend that to, like, any situation as well. Um, if you're, if you look at life as, like, a constant battle, you're going to be given battles to fight. If you, if you look at life as, like, a constant learning experience, you're going to learn. <laughs> 
um, law of attraction type shit, um, which, (laughs) yeah, another can of worms I don't really want to open up, but it is what it is. I think, I think, I think that's about all I wanted to say on nostalgia and everything else that I kind of just rambled on about. Just let me mm, double check in my mind, see if I have anything else to add. Mm. Nope. I think that's about it. So yeah. Um sorry this one's kind of a throwaway, kind of like a rambling, um, incoherent mess. Um if I spent more time on this it probably would have been better, but honestly I'm just doing this so my next video, um, which should be in, in October, uh when I do denial of death. I want that one to be more high quality. This one isn't really that important. Just a couple of ideas that no one's probably going to listen to me anyways. So, um, it is what it is. Um, but yeah. Thank you guys. Um, yeah. See you next time. Later.